how to edit a music video coming up. Crack a lag on the track. What's up everyone, my name is Karkalak. Welcome back to Karkalak TV. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to edit a music video. Now to keep this video short and sweet, I wanna just go over all of the basics, the fundamentals, the most important parts to putting together a music video. So whether this is your first time editing a music video, or if you're just looking to sharpen your skills, I'm gonna go over how I edit a music video and all the things that go into it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future uploads for more good ass content just like this right here. All right, so by now you've already shot the video. You've already watched my video going over the camera settings. You've already watched my video going over how to shoot a music video. And now it's time to edit the video. No! If you haven't seen those two videos, I'm gonna put links in the description, but it is time to edit a music video. And this is, a, this is actually a real music video that I do have to edit. All right, so the software that I use and software that I've always used to edit music videos is Sony Vegas Pro. Honestly, if I was starting over today, I'd probably use Adobe Premiere Pro. I feel like Premiere Pro is the most used software out there. So if you're stuck and you're looking for tips or tutorials, there's a lot more of that information out there for Premiere Pro. But no matter what software you use, these fundamentals that I'm gonna show you right here apply to any software that you use. So step one is making sure you set your project up correctly. First off, set your resolution to the highest quality of the footage that you're actually using. So my camera shoots in 4K, so I'm going to have a 4K resolution for my project. Your software should have some sort of templates already in there. I know this template right here matches my footage, but with a lot of cameras, like for years, the highest resolution that my camera would film in is 1920 by 1080. But you know, I've upgraded, so now we're in the 4K. Put some respect on my name. Frame rate, make sure your frame rate, 23.976. Full resolution rendering quality, obviously the best. De-interlace method, that's important, go to none. Resample mode, disable resample, whether your software has those functions or not. All right, so the next step is to import all of your footage into the project. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using basic, nobody knows, featuring B-Lil's, produced by Karkalak. We shot this video in Colorado. I have a whole vlog showing the behind the scenes of this music video shoot. All right, so once you've imported all of your footage into the project, the first thing that I do is I make proxy files of all my footage and what it does for me, and granted, this is like a $3,500 custom built, top high-end performing PC that I built specifically for editing music videos. But when I'm still editing these 4K files, it'll lag while I'm editing it. So the proxy files are kind of like temporary, lower quality files, and it makes your editing go a lot faster a lot smoother, it fixes the lag. So I always highlight all of the footage, I'll right click and then create video proxy. With these files, I've already created the proxy, that's why it's not letting me choose this option. Now once you create proxy files, it'll take a little bit of time, so what I'll do is, if I know that tonight I'm gonna edit a music video sometime during the day, I'll open up the project, I'll import all the footage in there, I'll highlight all the files, and then I'll go to create proxy files and I'll leave. So I know when I come back, the proxies are already made and the video is ready to be edited. All right, so step one, drag your song down to the timeline. The song is right here. It's time to go. Drag your first performance shot down and match it up to the song. There we go. You ready? All right, three, two, one. All right, so a trick that I like to do with matching the words up to the song is mute the song and then listen to the video clip for when a drop happens. It's basic. Boom. So right there I can see the beat dropped. That's when the hook starts. And then now I'll unmute the song. It, 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 it's basic. Boom, right there. They both drop. I match those up and I'll play them together just to make sure they sound on. And you can even see, like when you zoom into the timeline, you can see, you can see the sounds. Nobody knows, nobody knows. And one thing that I've noticed is it's like you almost want the video file to be a tiny bit ahead of the song because sometimes like people, when they're lip singing the song or saying the words, it looks more on beat if the video file is a tad bit early. Like right here, you can see it's a tiny bit early. I'd rather have it right here than right there. So now I'll mute that audio file. Nobody knows when it's time to go, it's time to go. 
All right, so that's the first performance shot right there. The artist did the entire song. Nobody knows when it's time to go, it's time to go. And then what I'll do is I'll actually delete the audio track for that video clip. I'm gonna zoom out and now I drag the second performance shot. Drag it down to the timeline. What I'll do is I'll mute the previous one that I already matched up. And now we're doing the same thing. We're gonna mute the song, let the video clip play, find where the where the drop is. Good, yeah. Boom, right there. I'm gonna cut the clip, unmute the song again. I can see it's right there. Nobody knows, nobody knows. Good. When it's time to go, it's time to go. Then when you mute the audio file from the video clip, watch the video clip, listen in to the song. Will you die young, will you die old? That's just a question that we both don't know. Yep, it's on beat. Good. So now again, I'll delete that audio track from the video clip. So now I have two of the performance shots matched up on beat. Mute both of those, and then you're going to continue doing the same thing, right? So you'll drag the third clip, the fourth clip, the fifth clip, however many performance shots you have. The first thing that I like to always do is drag the performance shots to the timeline, match them up with the song so everything's on. And from there, I like to do one track at the very top of my timeline. And this is where I do all of the B-roll. So I'll just have a B-roll track at the very top, like this right here. Time to take over our shit. Hey, I bet you, I bet you this post will go viral. Now let's talk about color grading and color correction. I recommend either doing it at the very beginning. The only thing is when you do it at the very beginning, it can make you have more lag while you're editing the video. So sometimes people like to wait to the end. Once they're done editing the entire video, then they'll do all the color grading, color correction. But what I found is I like to adjust my colors in the very beginning so i kind of have an idea of how the video is going to look or what color and look it's going to have so i like to do it in the beginning most of the times but again that's our personal preference all right so let's say i was going to edit this music video right here right now so i do have a drone shot let me drag this drone shot right here you don't need to have a drone for music videos but if you do have a drone like i live in lansing michigan this is a music video shoot in colorado springs colorado i mean when you think of colorado you picture mountains this would be a great time to be a drone drone owner and be shooting a music video. Usually when I get drone shots, I tend to show the drone shot right in the beginning, the first shot when the video starts. And then I always film my drone shots at 60 frames per second so that way I can slow it down to do some slow-mo. Yeah, so let me do that right now actually. And then what I did there, this is for Sony Vegas users, the playback is gonna be 40% because it, it's your your project is 24 frames per second, but you film your slow-mo at let's say 60 frames per second. So those 60 frames per second, when the playback is 40%, then it's smooth and there's not like those skip laggy type slow motion where it looks choppy. So right there. On the track. Okay. Now if you have a logo and right when the video comes on, that's a great spot to put it. So I have my logo. Anytime I shoot a music video or honestly film anything, I, I have this logo. I'll, I'll play you guys the clip right here. I'll solo it. It's just my logo and it kind of like glitches. If you want to know how to do that, let me know in the comments. I can do a whole tutorial on that. Or Fiverr is another good place too. You can go to Fiverr and look up uh, logo animation and there's probably someone for five bucks where you send them your logo and they'll make it do some cool shit. Now for the logo, I don't need any of the audio with it, so I'll delete that track. And then as you see right here, I have the logo, but it's solid black behind it. Black on the track. And I don't want that to be there. So what I do is I change this setting right here from source. You can either do screen or you can change it to add. I like to just do add. And what it does is it makes the, that black background see-through transparent. So some tips for editing the intro of your music video. Put some B-roll, great place to put some B-roll. Um, let's throw some more clips in here. If you have a camera that can film in 120 frames per second, when you slow that all the way down to 20% at playback, even more cinematic, even more epic. I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> so from there, I would either do a fade to show maybe like both artists face. Shot the basic, shot the B Lil's for not even knowing but being a volunteers for my how to edit a music video tutorial. All right, here we go. Got a shot of his face. I'm changing the playback to 20%. And then with Sony Vegas, all you do is if you drag them like this, it just, it's gonna make them fade together. 
I mean, that was kind of smooth, but it kind of wasn't that smooth. Ah, for the tutorial, that'll work. Oh yeah, that's sweet. That's a little far out shot. So I'm gonna place that there. A little speed ramp trick. This is uh, kind of more advanced. I'll make it fast forward for a second and then go into slow motion. So what I did was I just made it play. This clip right here, it goes fast forward into slow motion. So if you watch that, it would look like this. Then at the end, we'll do a quick little fast forward and then we're gonna get the fuck out of there. So bam. Now we can go, let's go throw this flag back in there. Remember intro is just kind of B-roll, setting it up for what they're about to see, what they're about to watch. Bam. It looks cool too when, when you have some B-roll clips and let's say you let it play in real time for a split second and then boom, slow it down to slow motion and then maybe fast forward for a second and then boom, cut it again and go into slow motion. So right here, I'm gonna make it go into slow motion. And then right here, I'm gonna make it go back to real time, 100% playback. And then boom, cut again, go into slow-mo. It's basic. Oh shit. Let's say this was gonna be the intro at the very end, I want it to fade out. And then we'll unmute those performance tracks. So let's, let's rewatch what we got right here. This is the intro so far. Crack a lag on the track. Yeah, you know, that's a pretty good intro. There's a part right here, you can see the speaker right here. So what, what I would do is I would crop it in like this. So that way you don't see that. And then also on the intro, a lot of times you wanna put the name of the song or the artist names. One word of advice would be choose good fonts. I feel like finding and applying good fonts for music videos is a whole tutorial in its own, but I'll show you a couple fonts that I do like. Okay, so we're gonna make this fade in, fade out. And the name of the song was Nobody Knows. Like, let's say I left it like that. That looks very bad. And that's Arial, Arial font. Yeah, this font right here is Gloss and Bloom. I feel like this is a, a pretty cool looking font. I would make this fade in and fade out. <laughs> or you could always put the name of the song on the very last clip before the hook drops or the verse drops. It's basic. It's basic. Either or, uh, half the videos I'll put the, the font on the intros, half the videos I don't. It's kind of personal preference. Sometimes the artist always wants their name and the name of the song. So so if you want to, go ahead and do that. But now, let's start editing these uh, performance shots. You're kind of gonna go back and forth and go with the vibe, the feel of the song. So if it's a, a faster hype, high paced song and there's a lot going on in it. When you edit it, it needs to be like, you know, clip one, clip two, clip three, slow motion, fast forward, another clip, another clip, like move to match the energy of the song. This, if you listen to this song, nobody knows, nobody knows. This is more of a slower, smooth song. So the editing of it would be longer clips. Maybe instead of cuts back and forth between the different shots, it's gonna be fades. And something that I always do with smooth songs, I'll show you, I, I'll do fade outs of a clip where it'll actually fade to black before it goes into the next clip. And then the next clip will fade in. So at the end of this clip, I'll fade it out to black. And then when the next clip comes in, we'll fade this in. So, there, so it'll go solid black for a second there. Nobody knows, nobody Knows. Knows. When it's time to go, it's time to go. I feel like when you do the fades, it, it's more smooth. First, you could just cut. Go. Go. You die? As you see, I only put two of the performance shots right there, and ideally I have about six performance shots, but I want to keep it more simple for the tutorial. As far as going from performance shots to B-roll, that's all up to you and your own taste. With this song right here, I would probably do it like this, where this is about five, six, seven seconds or so of the performance shots. And then now to keep it entertaining, I'm gonna go to some B-roll or maybe I'll go back to the drone shots and then I'll go back to the performance shots again. Nobody die young, will you die old? So if I wanted to, again, I could do, we're gonna fade out of this clip and then fade into the next clip. Or actually, we'll do two B-roll clips in a row. Let's go back to that drone shot. We'll find a different spot in there. I'm gonna make the 
the drone shot playback in slow motion, 40%. And then we'll actually get rid of that, that fade out of the previous clip and we'll fade in with the drone shot. So now, and then we could fade out of that and then fade into the next clip. That's just a question that we both don't. Right on beat, I can see that the beat drops right there, and I want to cut right there and go into the next performance shot. So sometimes you can cut on beat where you can see the kicks are. That works a lot of the time. Sometimes it doesn't have to be as you see. Right here when we show this scene, there's no cut there, but it still works good when you watch it. Nobody knows, nobody knows when it's time to go. Just remember to keep it as interesting as you can while you're editing. Don't show the entire music video in the first 30 seconds and keep switching it up. So let's say you have six different performance shots. Maybe use two of those, the first one minute of the song, and then use the other two, the second minute of the song, and then use the other two, the third minute of the song. So it's like you continue to introduce shots as you edit it. Then the same thing with the B-roll. Don't do too many performance shots back to back to back to back to back, unless that's the type of video that you're going for. Just sprinkle in the B-roll here. Some songs you're gonna have a bunch of B-roll, back to back to back, and some songs you're not. Most of my videos, I'll do it similar to this where nobody you got some performance knows, shots. Nobody not for very long and then boom now now we're watching beat roll again that's just a question that we both don't know nobody knows nobody knows now as far as doing some cool editing effects i think that's a whole tutorial on its own let me know in the comments if you guys want to see some i'll show you a couple that aren't crazy at all that i use often in videos let's say i have a b-roll clip right here And so what I'm doing is, this is a B-roll clip. I cut it right here and I'm gonna make it fast forward. So I'm, I'm changing the playback to, a, to 400%, only for a split second. And then I'm going to cut it again and go into slow motion. And then I'm gonna make these two clips overlap for a second. And then I'm gonna go to my transitions. I'm gonna go to dissolve and I'm gonna go to additive dissolve. Drag that down on that fade. And what it does is it's gonna have a quick white flash. And then if you want it to last longer, you can stretch it out. That's kind of cool if you do one in the beginning, one at the end. Very simple effect. I'm gonna show you guys another one too. This is just with keyframes. Let's find a B-roll clip right here. Let's go to basic. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the clip into slow motion first. I'm gonna go to the pan and crop and I'm gonna select the ending of the clip. I'm gonna add a keyframe and I'm honestly just gonna zoom in a little bit. And what it's gonna do is when you watch this, it's going to zoom in is all. And then one thing you can do is you can twist it a little bit or you can make it zoom in and, and, and you change the positions. So now it's on his face. And then you can do the, the opposite. But yeah, that should be the general concept of editing a music video. I would say on your intro, it's gonna be a lot of what an intro is. You know, the introduction to the video, you're gonna show the, the scenery, B-roll slow motion shots to bring the video in. Then it's gonna be more performance scene heavy throughout the video. And at the very end for the outro, a lot of B-roll heavy shots again at the end. Yeah, next would be rendering the video. I'm going to do a separate tutorial on my render settings, the best render settings for music videos and mine will be for sony vegas pro users let me know in the comments what software you're using to edit music videos on i'm sony vegas gang i've just always been that way i tried to switch over to premiere pro about four years ago when i got my sony camera it was just getting over that learning curve i had so many videos to shoot i'm so fluent and used to sony that i can fly through a video in a few hours and it seemed like it was going to take me a whole day and a half to get done with a music video in premiere pro hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future uploads if this video helped you out do me a favorite and give the video a thumbs up i'll see you guys in the next video crackalack tv we out